Welcome brothers and sisters for another Sunday evening uh, Zoom session. So if you're here for the first time, I want to welcome you. Uh, today I'm going to continue on uh, what I left, uh, what I spoke last week uh, from the series called Freedom, uh, Freedom from Death. Um, some questions, you know, have uh, risen from last week, you know, can we pray in the name of Jesus, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, last week I said, you know, we when we go to the Father, we go, see, when I go to the Father, I go as Andrew, okay? Uh, what, what we have misunderstood, the work of Christ is that, you know, we are unworthy, we are covered by Christ and, you know, when the covering is gone, we are still unworthy. So, this unworthy consciousness, condemnation consciousness is still gripping our hearts and therefore we don't have confidence with God. You know, um, Paul, uh, John says, you know, in, in 1 John, he says, you know, if we, if we don't have, if we don't have condemnation in our hearts, you know, we have confidence with God. So, so how do we approach God? So, one brother rightly asked, you know, so should I use the name of Jesus in the end of prayer, end of my prayer? I said, absolutely. <laughs> I still pray when I pray in the name of Jesus. You know, I, you know, when I when I when I end my prayer, I say, "Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus." But my understanding has changed, and I wanted to go a little deeper into that and explain that, and also summarize the series, um, and come to a, uh, bring this to a conclusion, so that next week we can start a new, another series of talks on freedom series. You see, so when I pray or when you pray. You don't pray unworthy before the Father. Okay, just because I use the name of Jesus, He will now answer my prayer. No, it's not like that. So I gave you an example like how my son can come and speak to me and my daughter can come and speak to me. When my son speaks to me, she, uh, he speaks to me as my son. When my daughter speaks to me, she speaks to me as a daughter because both of them have my life in them. You see, this is you need to understand. So when Jesus was on planet Earth, he had the life of God in him. Let me just go and draw a little schematic diagram, which may help you understand this. This is to help understand your identity at, at, a, at, a, at a deeper level, because we need to know who we are in Christ. What does it mean when I say I am in Christ? You know, these things we need to understand because our ability to function in the newness of life, as we read in Pro Romans chapter six, you know, Paul says, you know, that we are now raised together with him, that that may be walk, that we may walk in the newness of life. That depends upon uh, how we process information and how we make decisions every day in our lives. That is that is very important. See, this is um, imagine this is God's heart. I'm 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 using the red color to represent God's heart. And then we'll put black here. This is Jesus. This is all of us. Remember when Jesus was on planet Earth, he looked like the rest of the human beings. So this is... But Jesus had the life of God. So I'm going to put a red dot inside him. So Jesus had the life of God, the very life which God had. That life is called the Zoe. That Zoe means, you know, the life that was with God, in God, the life that was uncreated, the life that has no beginning and no end. It exists in a continuum which is full of love, life, light, peace, joy, all the, you know, the, the attributes of the spirit realities are in that life called Zoe. And Jesus had that life in him. So, but rest of us, what happened to the rest of us? Rest of us were kind of, you know, lost and separated from the Father. We are, we don't, we didn't have the life of God. Okay, I want you to understand that. So what happens on the cross? We will go back and draw. I will go back and draw the timeline. You know, the the diagram which I've been uh, drawing in all my sessions in the last uh, six sessions, actually, maybe seven sessions, probably. You know. Um, so what happens, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says, you know, Jesus became a life-giving spirit. You know, the first Adam became a, a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. So through the, through the cross, because Jesus died on the cross and Jesus rose from the dead, 
that life is now made available to everyone who would believe in his name. Okay, again, quoting John chapter 1, verse 11, 12, and 13, you know, he says, to everyone who believed in him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. So when we say, I believe in him, I believe that he, he died on the cross, God, as per the scriptures, I believe that he was buried as per the scriptures and I he was raised from the dead. That is the tenet of the gospel. Again, Paul explains that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay, so when I say I believe in him, I believe in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus at his resurrection. When I believe that God raised Christ from the dead, his resurrection becomes my resurrection. Therefore, that life that Jesus had is poured out into my heart, into my heart. So let's say this guy believes, this guy believes uh, Jesus, this guy believes Jesus, you know, oops. So let's put, so let's, let's put these three guys. But if you see, there is no difference between this guy and this guy now. There is a difference between this guy. This is Jesus. Let's, um, yeah. Let's encircle him. This is Jesus. He has the life of God. When he died and rose again, he tore his body. This, this is the way I, I visualize and pictureize. He has the life of God. That life, he could not give it to the others. To give it to the others, he had to be planted in the ground as a seed. Uh, John chapter 12, he says, the, the wheat of grain has to go in. Then it will produce much grain. So when he rose from the dead and everybody who believed in him, he gave them the right to become the child of God. So when we believe that God raised Christ from the dead, uh, Christ from the, dead the, the very life of God, imagine the color red here, uh, for this diagram, red represents Zoe, okay? So the Zoe life of God, which was in Jesus, now came to this guy, this that guy and that person. So that could be you and me here. So if you look at them, we don't have a difference. So that means he cries to God. He speaks to God as what? As a child of God. Now, I can speak to the Father as a child of God. There is no difference. So when I say I pray in the name of Jesus, what I'm saying is, when I even now when I pray in the name of Jesus, what I'm saying is, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, meaning my understanding behind is, is this. I come to you holy, righteous as your son, like the way Jesus came to the Father. Do you see it now? So this understanding is what gives authority. You know, you've got to understand this. You know, the, the, the name Jesus actually is not special because the name Jesus is an English name. It is not the name of Jesus. <laughs> the name of the Messiah in the Bible is Yeshua, Joshua, which is the name Joshua. The English translators put the name Jesus. Okay. It's the name Joshua. Um, and there are many Joshua's. And that is why they identified um, Jesus in the Bible as the Joshua of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, because he came from the place called Nazareth. You know, you remember in one, uh, one place in Acts, uh, the sons of Skeva will try to cast a demon out and they say, um, you know, the name of Jesus, you know, in the name of Jesus, the Paul preaches, we cast you out, you know, and the devil will respond back saying that, hey, I, I know Jesus, I know Paul. You see how the devil, the devil <laughs> is telling us something there. Even the devil is giving us a clue. I know Jesus, Jesus is the son of God. I know Paul, Paul is the son of God. Who are you? You see, it is not the name that does the magic. It is the office that represents. It is the authority that it represents. Can you see? See, when I say in the name of Jesus, the devil knows whether I believe that. You see, it is not, there is no magic in the name of Jesus. The magic is in the authority. You see, the name of Jesus represents the authority of sonship, the office of sonship. I am, when I go into a situation, I am the son of God. When I know who I am, when I know my identity, when I know my, uh, my who, what is my self-worth and self-image is based on, based on the Zoya life of God, I go as the son of God. When I am the son of God, the devil trembles. They know who I, they, 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 they perceive this guy, this, this guy knows who he is and they scoot and they, and they run. And I give an authority, you give an authority based on that uh, understanding and under, establishing in that identity, the devil has no choice but to leave. You see, that is why Jesus said, you know, fast and pray that you may, that the reason why we fast and pray is that, you know, 
Establish yourself in who, knowing who you are. Okay. Very important, brothers and sisters. So when we say in the name of Jesus, we are not saying, oh, Lord God, uh, it's like my daughter saying, you know, Daddy, I'm not worthy uh, just because I'm asking you uh, these things in the name of my, my brother Samuel. Please, will you give it to me? Well, that doesn't make sense. It's exactly when I go before the Father, he gives it to me because Andrew is asking. You see, Andrew has his own personality. You have your own personality. Jesus has his own personality. Okay, there are no, we are, we are not, God is not interested in making like robots. So, you know, if you make a, in the production line, if we all make robots, all the robots will be exactly the same. Correct. God is not going to make robots out of us. We all have our individual personality, but the character is the fruit of the spirit will be displayed through our personality. Uh, blessing this world, blessing the people around us, blessing the world around us. You got to understand that it is that Zoya life of God gives me the um, office of sonship. I'm functioning in the office of son sonship bringing into manifestation heaven's realities let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven who's the agent who's going to deliver heaven's realities on planet earth you and me when i when we are when we are stepping into the office of sonship we are using the name of jesus that's what it means uh, you need to understand that so it is not that you are so unworthy you know people carry this weightage of burden within them you know the condemnation which i carried I said, I never, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm amount to, I'm good for nothing. I'm good for nothing. Uh, but just because I use the name of Jesus, Lord, will you please answer this prayer for me? No, brothers and sisters, you are restored. You know, you are restored like Jesus. You know, read John chapter 12, verse about verse 20 onwards. Jesus talks about this, you know, how the, the grain of wheat will fall on the earth and it will produce much grain. And that much grain is you and me. We have become exactly like Jesus with the spirit of Christ inside us. Uh, and I want to dive a little bit uh, deeper into that. Okay. This is the very idea God had in his heart even before he created anything. Okay, I'll prove it to you. Let's, let's go to um, what is the purpose of all creation? What is the purpose behind all creation? Okay, go to Ephesians. Ephesians is a great book to study and understand these things. Okay, let's look at this one. Um, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, having predestined us, to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ. You know, you know, there is a big, big, big misunderstanding on that word adopt, uh, predestined. You know, people say, you know, God already predestined who will go to heaven, who will go to hell. God has already made his mind. Okay, who is going to heaven, who is going to hell. And now he's just simply playing the game with us. You know, here it is not about going to heaven or going to hell. Okay, it is about predestined to us to adoption as sons by Christ Jesus. What is the word meaning of the word adoption, which I want to explain a little bit today and you will get it today. You see, when we think about the word adoption, we think about, you know, adopting an orphan into our family. Say, let's say you, there is an orphan. I want to adopt the child. I go and say, you know, go through the legal formalities and I bring the, uh, bring the child into my family and then the child will be given my family name. You know, that is the legal. Here, that is not the word adoption here. The, the word adoption here is huyothesia. The word huyos means mature sons of God. Okay, the word huyos means mature sons of God. You can, you can do a little word study later. You know, huyos. It is a Greek word. You know, there are four or five uh, Greek words uh, the writers of the uh, New Testament uses for the word child of God. Uh, Blepharos, Nepios, uh, Technon, uh, Huyos. Okay, the word Huyos means a mature son of God. Okay, you know, uh, keep your keep your finger on Ephesians and quickly turn to Romans chapter uh, Romans chapter eight. The word Huyos comes there. Look at this word, verse eight, uh, chapter eight. You know, it says, "For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are." Sons of God. That word, you know, uh, sons there is huyos of God. Okay. Now think about this. When Jesus was on planet earth, he was, he had the life of God inside him. 
therefore he was a huyos a mature son of god a mature son of god means according to romans chapter 8 who, who uh, someone who walks after the spirit someone who conducts his life conducts the affairs of his life based on who he is in the spirit rather than by sensual knowledge do you get it that's what that's what it means a mature son of god he 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 deals his finances he deals his relationship he deals with his uh, job and career he deals with his education he deals with his um, inheritance whatever it is based on who he is in relationship to the father not based on the earthly sensual people like the sensual people that means he allows his spirit to regulate his actions his words his behavior his uh, uh, his actions everything is regulated by a reality that reality is god's reality which is already established in our spirit that is what it means to be a huyos of god mature sons of god you know we are all not we are all very immature sons of god okay paul, paul you know in uh, in 1 corinthians chapter 3 paul says to corinthians church you know you are still acting like children uh, there the, he uses the word nepios nepios means children you know have you seen children you know when they are small you know they, when they want a toy they they, they throw a tantrum ah, they cry i want this toy i want this toy now okay they throw a tantrum like nepios nepios means they are regulated by they, their decision making they 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 conduct their life by the flesh rather than by who they are in the spirit okay so here who else so here the word adoption look go back to ephesians um ephesians 1 chapter uh, 4 and 5 he says we are predestined us to adoption as sons by jesus christ i want to explain that because if you understand that the way you pray will change we are predestined to adoptions. The word adoption there means huyothesia. Huyothesia means revealing the mature sons of God. Okay. Here you need to understand the huyothesia is a ceremony in the Jewish culture where a child who is born, say for example, I have a son, right? I have a son who is now gone into university. Last week he went to university. Okay. He was a boy in my house. He was a little baby in my house. He was a boy in my house. He was a teen in my house. Now he's gone to study uh, engineering you know so he's gone there he's still a child he's growing he's maturing he's maturing he's maturing in the jewish family what happens is when the son is maturing when he attains the age of 30 he's now attained a mental stability a mental age where he can now take on the father's business now he can represent the father maybe the father will give him now the signing authority now when the son signs the check it is as if the father signed the check the son has taken the full his son has attained the fullness of maturity now he can take on the business from the father and run it with him and for him and through him are you with me the father is still owning the business but the son is running the business with the father that age in the in the in the, in the jewish family in the jewish culture is the age of 30 okay when 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 a son attains the age of 30 the father gathers um, an adoption ceremony See, you remember, he is already a son. He is not somebody who is an orphan. He's, he's, he's not a, he is not an orphan who is going to be adopted into the family. No, he is already a son. But now they, he gathers an adoption ceremony. That is the huyothesia. Which means now he gathers the family and the friends and tells them, Hey, this is my mature son. Now he will... I am revealing him. He will now take care of my business. Can you see? That revelation is called huyothesia. That is that is what happened. Uh, for Jesus at the age of 30 when he was baptized the father is doing the uh, ceremony for Jesus this is my beloved son in whom you are well pleased so that spirit brothers this is an amazing truth that when Jesus was revealed to Israel as a mature son of God meaning who now um, conducts the affairs of his life based on who he is in relation to the father based on who he is in the spirit he is led by the spirit okay that is who is you see when we we are born again the spirit of the same who the spirit of his son has been poured out into our hearts crying out of our father let's go to romans again look at this uh, Romans chapter 8. Look at this here. Uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom 
we cry out abba father the spirit of adoption refers to the spirit of christ coming in that mature spirit of christ coming in dwelling in our spirit now we cry out to him abba father look at this diagram here that life of god that was in christ is poured out into my heart and your heart and i go to him as christ went to god you see this if you understand if if you if you can take this in and contemplate and understand the way you pray the way you have confidence in your prayer will dramatically change you will actually stop praying you will not first you will stop praying <laughs> let me explain that you now have to think wait a minute can i just pray random things you will be very careful about praying you will not pray nonsensical prayers all your nonsensical religious prayers will will, will be cut down this is what john is saying he is saying you know we will pray according to the will of god before we pray about anything we will find the will of god as revealed in the life of christ as revealed in the word of god that's what john is saying in 1 john um, uh, 1 john chapter 5 when we know that we ask anything according to his will we know that he has heard him and when we know that he has heard him we have the confidence our prayers are answered can you see this is a life of confidence but christians are not living like that i wasn't living like that i'm just slowly stepping into the realization who i am in christ when i say i am in christ simply and not a phrase that i am attaching to myself so that i can live however i've been living and now i say i am in christ no this is a information that is becoming a reality within me and totally transforming me from within me changing me from the inside out okay that is what is going to happen to each and every one of us as you not only understand this truth and internalize this truth so here paul is saying you know that the spirit of adoption has been poured out into us crying out abba father okay then you know verse 17 if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him we may also be glorified together you know again it needs a lot of explanation that is a different topic but the point is we have become joint heirs with christ okay a joint heir is someone who represents see i have become a signing authority in the checkbook okay jesus can sign the checkbook i can also sign the checkbook that's what joint heirs means a co-heir is different you know co-heir means both the party has to sign in the check for the check to be valid a joint heir means jesus can release a check by his, his signature alone i can release the check by my signature alone that's what it means joint heir you know the authority and the power that has been given to us into the son of god sons of god is us why do i say all these things because if you go back and listen to my uh, previous talks i talked about this you know when we died with him you know our death we don't live with death consciousness we live with destiny consciousness we live with christ consciousness christ dema- demands and declares my destiny christ leads me into my destiny every day i don't think like the rest of the world oh i'm getting old oh arthritis is coming oh i'm getting old i need to get my colonoscopy checked oh i need to, uh, after 60 i need to get my this checked that checked because what the world is preparing the world is preparing us to die the world is preparing okay you know you are you know you have to have this you have to have that you know you are getting old you see none nowhere in the bible it is like that it baffled me when i read it and nowhere because when people live with death consciousness we think certain way but when death is gone for us in the past we died with him on the cross death is gone past and our understanding what happens is now every day we step into life experiencing the newness of life fellowshipping with the father that's what eternal life is i spoke about last uh, last week you know knowing the father knowing the father is our goal see again knowing the father again i explained this last week knowing the father is not some sort of intellectual mystical realization oh i'm just going through this goosebumps every day you know the father is tickling me from the inside no it is his word becoming reality in my heart and it dictates every decision i take it governs and regulates my life you brothers and sisters that's what the word logos means you see when the word became flesh see the the life of god that was that was a zoe life of god when it came into the word that came into a, as a human being the word became flesh what does the word becoming flesh means the word there is logos 
logos let me write another word here logos is the word we um, we get the word logic from logic is the word logos okay if you think about logos see jesus is the logos in the flesh you and i are the logos in the flesh right now because of christ we have become the logos in the flesh that means we are the sons and daughters of god what what does it mean i am the logos of the flesh i know a bunch of scriptures i can memorize a lot of scriptures i go about you know flashing everywhere saying that you know hey look at me i know a lot of scriptures no logos means the logic think about the word logic what is logic logic is a, is a sequence of thoughts or a sequence of um actions that we do to arrive at a conclusion to arrive at a decision let's say you make a decision okay how and somebody ask ask you this question on what logic you you came to this conclusion or what logic the word they're asking is what are the steps the thought process behind that decision every say for example you make a de, you make a decision here okay and then there is a thought process you know people are asking this is a decision you made so let's say you made a decision to move to america okay uh, somebody comes and ask you on what logic what they're asking is how did you come to the decision but if you think about it you had a thought and then you had subsequent thoughts you had subsequent thoughts and these subsequent thoughts came you know with the came to help you to come to that conclusion and you made a decision all of this them put together is called the logic okay each of them individually each of them individually now now watch this carefully jesus is the logos of god meaning every decision every action in every thought process his thoughts were in line with the word of god in other words his thoughts were righteous before god so every thought is righteous i'm going to put the word r so every thought of jesus is righteous righteous that means in line with right the word right uh, the word righteous means straight one of the meaning of the word righteous means straight every thought process of jesus every decision the every every time he looks at the world and he makes a decision it is in right standing with god that's what its word righteous means so when the word logos means you know the logic of god means you know the righteousness of god not one cannot be unrighteous even even if one thought process you know becomes unrighteous then the decision will be corrupted that decision will not be in line with god that is what is the word logos means can you see brothers and sisters now now oh hallelujah now you and i are stepping into that kind of life where we allow the spirit of god to illuminate in our hearts the word of god and therefore we make decisions based on righteousness See that is what it means seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness everything Paul said it another way i bring every thought take every thought captive and bring it to the obedience of Christ you see you might say there are good thoughts okay i want to invest uh, 100 crores of 100 you know million pounds or dollars in in this uh, in this business everybody is doing it and they are getting good returns it's a it's a nice thought but for you is it righteous thought that is a question how do I, how do I, how do you make the decision in relationship with the father yes everybody is making it's it's a, according to the worldly logic it gives you security it gives you good pension in the old age but the father's question is hey you the question that we you know we need to ask is father is it righteous for me is it going to affect my life is it going to affect my destiny see everything is connected to everything else so everything every little thought is connected to everything else which is going to shape the decision see ah oh, is this is not, i'm not saying this to overwhelm you i'm saying this to you i'm saying this so that you will open your heart and say father i need to know you that is what eternal life every day i walk in the knowledge of him that means every day in everything that i do i bring my life i bring my thought i bring my emotion in line with who i am in christ who i am in him who i am as a son of god You see this is how a son of God begins to manifest on planet earth. This is the purpose of God, pre-creation purpose of God for every child of God. He predestined meaning he foreordained and predestined everyone to become a mature son who is this year who is in Christ Jesus. Can you see what is the predestination attached to not going to heaven or hell? No 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 no. When Christ came he brought heaven's reality and demonstrated 
it's on the planet earth now we you and i filled with the same spirit of christ begin to walk in that realization and demonstrating heaven's reality on planet earth but what do we do we have live, we are living exactly like the rest of the world because we have kept, kept death as our in the forefront and we are saying one day christ is coming when i die i should go to heaven you know so heaven going to heaven has become our priority but god's priority is god's you know god's plan for your life is ephesians 1 4 8 that we may be predestined as predestined as to adoptions as sons by jesus christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will when did this happen even before the foundations of the world can you see brothers and sisters this is so powerful majority of the christians including me have i missed this because i missed the plan the original intention of god i carried out with my own religious intention okay i need to live holy so that i will go to heaven if you think about it you know if that is real you know many christians are only beating one drum oh we need to go to heaven we need to go to heaven why is jesus even returning back to planet earth why can't he say you know okay let's do a rapture let's take all those who believe in me and let's all stay in heaven why are the saints even returning back to planet earth <laughs> if you go think about it it doesn't make sense at all okay we are here we are here as sons of god who are now being trained by the holy spirit to become a mature son of god meaning who who walks who regulates our life by the word of god in our hearts by creating realities in our heart based on the word of god first that is the first thing that happens as we look into god's word as we look into the perfect law of liberty that's what uh, james says it in james chapter 1 as we keep looking into the word of god we create realities in our heart based on the word of god that means now the logos is taking uh, taking shape in our heart now the logos will begin to come out in our words and in our actions that is what it means to walk as a son of god hey i i i feel i i am a son of god i i have i can do whatever i want i'm going to go kill all my enemies okay wonderful nice thought let me go and check that thought with the life of jesus but jesus said if somebody you know love your enemies feed uh, go, do good to those who hate you you know pray for those who you know abuse you and spitefully use you then he says and you know, if somebody takes uh, one uh, clock uh, uh, give him the second uh, tunic also somebody drags you to walk for one mile you know walk with them for two miles what is he trying to say he is showing how the logos of god looks like in real life see we might all have carnal ideas about power okay if i have power i'll bring um, uh, fire from heaven and kill all the bad people okay uh, uh, wonderful thought let me go and check with the life of jesus in the logos of jesus in the logos of god in the flesh it doesn't say therefore my carnal idea of power needs to be shed i need to align my heart with the word of god as revealed in the in the ministry of jesus in the teachings of jesus jesus is the model for us jesus is the example for us he is our big brother he is that is where we draw conclusions okay how does it look like okay god is so powerful and god gives me unlimited power how should i use that power can i do whatever i want no look at what jesus says look at the life of jesus you know do good to those who hate you pray for those bless you know paul echoes the same thought in romans chapter 12 you know overcome evil with good why are he, why are they saying that see the way we have come to understand power is according to the world's power in the world's kingdom they dominate they crush the king's reign and rule over everybody the the the, the citizens of the uh, kingdom should serve the king but in god's kingdom the king serves everybody the king washes the feet of the people if i say i am walking in fellowship with jesus that is the display of my attitude should be if i am not displaying that attitude that means i am carnal i am not spiritual i am being a nepios i am immature sons of god i am not walking as a mature son of god do you see when there were divisions in the church when one one group said i am i we, we like paul's teaching when one group said no 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 we like apollo's teaching and there were divisions what did paul say you are like acting like babies you are acting like children hey you are supposed to be you have been given the mature spirit the spirit of who yours has been poured into your heart crying out abba father but you are not walking after that spirit you are carnal you are children you are acting like children oh brothers and sisters you know because we have got the whole power analogy mixed up we don't know how logos looks like because we stopped looking at one place where the power of god looks like it looks like in the it should look like 
how it looked like in the life of Jesus. Amen. This is so powerful, brothers and sisters. You know, brothers and sisters, you know, you have been given the same spirit of Christ inside you. You have been made the huyos of God. But when you don't walk as a huyos, you will be walking as a nepios. You will be, uh, you will be squandering. And the father has to wait till you come to maturity where you can now, he can give you the deeper things of the kingdom into you. You know, how you manage money. For example, Jesus said, if, if you don't know how to manage the, uh, you know, the least, how will the true riches can be given to you? He, he's talking in terms of, in the context of money. How do you manage money? What, what, what do you do with your money? Again, we do with the money. You know, what do we do with the money? Exactly like the carnal people, the worldly people do. And we ask God to bless us so that, you know, we will be exactly like them. God says, no, my kingdom operates in a different way. Know me. Know me and know my righteous ways. Know my little righteous ways. Everything that I do. Know me. Walk with me. Know me. This is a call for God to each and every one of us. As we walk like this, you know, death no longer is in our foresight. Death is gone. What is our focus now in life? Do you know what is our focus in life? To bring heaven's reality on planet earth. That is the word actually. Huyathesia means, you know, God wants to reveal his sons, his daughters. Imagine. You know, the world is full of people, right? Like people who don't know Christ. People who don't know Christ. People who don't know Christ. They are sick. They are, they are hurting. They are broken. And into, into that world came Jesus. Into that world, he came, Jesus came. And he forgave. And he healed. He rebuked. He corrected. He showed how it is done. Now he is gone. Right? And he gave that spirit into us. For what? So that you will all come to heaven. No, what did Jesus say? You are the light of the world. When they see the good works that you do, they will glorify the Father in heaven. Can you see? <laughs> you know, the, the other day a friend of mine came to my house and we were talking and we were jokingly saying, when we all turn up in heaven, the Father will say, why did you come here? <laughs> you are the light of the world. It's dark out there. Go shine there. <laughs> Hey, this is already a bright place. Heaven is such a bright place. There is no darkness in heaven. We, there is so much of light and we don't need another light. Go back to the darkness. Go back to the darkness and shine there. You know, we both were laughing, you know. If you think about it, there is a truth in it. There is a truth in it. Isaiah uh, chapter 60 prophesied that. You know, arise, shine, your light has come. You know, deep darkness will cover the face of the earth. Deep darkness when it covers the face of the earth. What should the children of uh, God do? Escape the darkness and go and be in the light. No, he says the Lord shall rise upon you. You shall shine in the dark place. How do we shine? How do we shine? When somebody sues us, we forgive them. Somebody wants to take this property from us, we give it to them freely. The world cannot understand that. The world cannot take that kind of humility and that kind of honesty. When everybody is doing certain life certain way, we live, we, we, we live by a different kingdom because we are seeing a different reality inside us. We are creating a different reality. That is what it means to be ultimately freed from death, actually, brothers and sisters. It is not about, you know, oh, I'm free from death, you know, I can live forever and then, you know, and, and be carnal. No, 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 no. All the blessings that the world is seeking after will come seeking after you will come seeking after you. They will come and overtake you, according to Deuteronomy 28. You know, but we are stressed out seeking after those blessings. You have to go and ask the Holy Spirit in the light of, you know, what I am speaking. In the light of what I am speaking. Father, what am I hearing? Where am I? Am I missing something here? Because the Father wants to give us the best life possible. A life that produces continual perpetual life. A life that produces peace and joy and righteousness called the kingdom living within us. But it is not dependent on the Father. It has been given to us and it depends upon we engaging with Him. So Lord, Father, open my eyes. Show me who I am in you. And meditation and all the little things that I taught, you know, meditating on the cross is the first place. Seeing my death on the cross, you know. You know, again, I've said this so many times, you know, it's, 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 it's worth mentioning again, you know. So this is death. This is birth. So somewhere at some point we met the cross. You know, you remember this is what I was teaching in the last six weeks. Okay. What happened here, this point, 
this point is the most significant point this is where you died when he died death no longer is death is gone death for you is here okay death has come here what happens here is you know your origin is not here your identity is no longer based on birth your identity is based on the spirit of god you know to to them that believed in his name he gave them the right to become the children of god they were not born of the flesh not of the blood not of the will of the father but born from above you and i are born from above it is there you became this person it is here it is here at this point you became this person let's pull this person here you became this person the life of god is being given to you from now from then on you you stepped into etern eternal life uh yeah, e t e r n eternal life yeah you stepped on to eternal life that means you're not every day waking up saying you know oh, i'm getting old oh, i'm going to die no 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 father i want to know you i want to create realities in my heart based on 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 what you are saying about me i want to read your word i want to know you that is how you look to the word of god it changes everything everything your relationship is going to change the way you relate to, the way you handle money is going to change the way you run after career is going to change the way you 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 volunteer in church is going to change the way you pray is going to change everything is going to change when you understand this brothers and sisters i am just talking to you out of my experience and i am talking to you out on many people's experience people are coming up and saying brother andrew you know what life is this i am enjoying life every day because why death is gone death is gone when death is gone you you no longer think like um um uh, no longer think like uh, the 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 world is thinking the world has got a time frame okay i'm getting 80 years oh i'm going 90 years 100 years hey you might die at 60 years you might die at 120 years it doesn't matter you may live leave your body at 60 or 80 it doesn't matter but how do you live every day that's what it matters every day how do you live no worry jesus said do not worry about tomorrow so you cannot worry you need not worry about tomorrow that means you can go to sleep peacefully knowing that the father is going to take care of my affairs it is a new thought in your brain it is a new thinking how do i get there how do i become the logos of god you know communing with the father every day understanding the cross you know go back and listen to the series at least few times brothers and sisters you know this series is one of the this series the freedom from death has evoked the maximum response for me of all the teaching that i have ever done in the past i put out about 200 plus teachings uh, 200 hours of teaching that is there in in the in the youtube but of that 200 hours of teaching the maximum response i got through emails through text messages was from the series people are waking up and understanding oh my goodness it is setting me free i don't see every day you know somehow we have accepted death in our subconscious conscious and subconscious we have accepted death and therefore you know therefore we have resigned our hoyathesia the we have we, we have ref, you know we have kind of you know put the huyos as a as an afterthought and we are living like the rest of the world but you and i have been made as a huyos of god that means you know we we allow the spirit to regulate our decision making that means we allow the spirit to regulate our thoughts that means we allow our spirit to regulate our actions and our words if my word is not in a, in line with who i am in christ that means what does it mean i am not fellowshipping with christ at that point in time i am not in fellowship with the father at that point in time see don't condemn yourself this is not for you to go enact as a christian no you cannot have you not feel still fed up yet you know you trying to be like a good christian have you tried to work on the fruit of the spirit i heard a series of talks you know in in our church long 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 time ago people were giving advice how to work the fruit of the spirit in our life i was thinking hmm let me see how that works all the best i have i have resigned from such kind of activities because i cannot produce the fruit of the spirit i cannot walk in love i cannot walk in peace i cannot walk in joy these are all fruit of the spirit the spirit bears them the spirit produces them inside me as i walk in union with him my focus is on union with him the fruit is beginning to come out can you see this is a new way of living shedding fears about money 
the shedding fuels about you know financial securities you want to keep the, as the world keeps the world is coming with a lot of insurance policies and we are also trying to keep insurance policies there is nothing wrong in saving money i'm not against it please you know save money but is that say is that money that you have saved is in fellowship with the father in fellowship with the father do you have peace about it then how what did jesus say about money what did jesus say about savings oh yeah hey, everything is there in the bible <laughs> jesus you know go read it you will begin to see scriptures in the new light as you take on this and identity as you take on this understanding you know this session is a, just a summary of the last 7 weeks of you know teaching that i've given death is gone death is gone death is gone there is no death for us huh if there is no death for us age is gone <laughs> age is a factor only you bring death inside the in the equation when death is gone whether you are 57 or 75 what does it matter it doesn't matter can you see that is why psalms 92 says you know even in their old age they will be fresh and be flourishing and be bearing fruit and declaring the righteousness of god to the uh, next generation hey that is how i see myself because these things are written in the scriptures for your admonition and my admonition it is for us to find out it is for us to search the scriptures and find out and meditate and put on that okay let me just read uh, you know time is up you know let me just read that uh, admonition given by brother james beloved brother james the apostle james the half brother of jesus wrote in the book of james look at what james is saying chapter 1 you know he's saying verse 21 therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls but be doers of the word not be hearers only deceiving yourselves for if any one is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forced forgetful hearer but a doer of the word this one will be blessed in whatever he does can you see that's the advice the early uh, the apostles gave to the church keep looking keep looking at your identity keep pondering about about your identity how does this truth say for example Psalm 92 verse the last five scripture says you know even in their old age they will be fresh and flourishing okay close your eyes it talks about two trees there the palm tree and the cedar tree you know i i went and i i don't know how a cedar tree looks like then i found out oh cedar tree is a national symbol of uh, lebanon <laughs> the cedars of lebanon the national flag in the flag of lebanon has the central as a central like ashoka chakra in india <laughs> indian flag we have the central figure that is a picture that's a lebanon tree okay uh, so the cedar tree of lebanon and palm tree you know so i take all these pictures in my imagination and then i used to think okay that means in my old age okay i will be uh, catching a plane for 10 hours to australia and i'll be preaching a sermon at the age of 85 Th- this is how i run the <laughs> imagination wildly Uh, you know you may you may think i am a fool but i, I actually you are <laughs> if you don't take the scriptures and see it in a way that is applicable to you you know what you will believe the lie of the devil the devil will say oh you're getting old look you know go check colonoscopy 60 years you're approaching 60 uh, get colonoscopy checked get cancer checked get that checked this checked that checked you know and then we are standing in the queue you know we are standing in the queue to get checked everything why why are we standing in the queue we have not taken the word of god we have not taken the word of god hey this is a reality that it's undeniable undeniable god's reality brothers and sisters you know this is the world's reality in which i am prodding about when you remove heaven from your equation only then you will be able to understand and embrace everything that i'm teaching when you think oh, i am going to go to heaven i need to go to heaven you will forget your duties here you will forget what you are supposed to be here 
you know, you know, there is a few minutes more here. I will explain a little bit more. You know, the word apostle, the word apostle means the one who is sent out. It is not a, a Hebrew word. It is a Roman Latin. It's a, it's a Roman word. It's a Greek word. The word apostle means the center. When Caesar captures a country, he sends apostles. That means the apostle will go and uh, convert that country which is captured into how Rome will look like. They will change the streets. They will change the name of the streets. They will change the name of the, the they build they erect buildings in at par with uh, Rome. So when Caesar when Caesar uh, wants to visit that country he will feel at home you know most of the indians can can understand what i'm saying because you know our cities have been changed into most of our cities the buildings in our cities look like england actually you know the the, the buildings you know the the streets and the named after british names and uh, the buildings looks like british because the viceroys the, you know the apostle in the english version of you know the viceroys they their job is to convert the place which they have captured into something that the queen or the king of england will look like will, will, will like in their hearts so when they come visiting uh, india when the caesar visits uh, the captured places he will feel at home do you know when you and i when you and i the huyos of God. When we walk in love, we create a culture, we die, we, we give our lives for our friends. We, 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 we sacrifice our life. The, we bring the culture of heaven here. We cast demons out, we heal the sick and we raise the dead and we, and we walk in as Jesus walked. To the point, if they can't stop you, they will kill you. Even when they're killing you, we, we, we will forgive them as they are killing us. Like Stephen was forgiving them as. When we are walking in like that, the world will know that God sent Jesus. The world will know God sent Jesus the way we. We are the apostles. We are bringing heaven's culture. When we are reigning and ruling on planet earth like that, when the king of kings comes, he comes and he sees we have already created this earth into heaven's culture. How? By uh, capturing political uh, powers and uh, running over institutions with uh, arrogance and power. No, I mean humility, sacrifice. This is Christianity 101. This is the life of the Spirit 101. See, God's reality, God has a reality that is unending, unyielding, never changing. His reality is revealed in the Word of God and also is seen in the life of God. The Word of God has to be interpreted by the life of Jesus okay very powerful point the word of God has to be interpreted by the life of Jesus when I see the life of Jesus did you know what Jesus do Jesus did he read Psalm 34 uh, uh, Psalm 37 I think he read one scripture in Psalm 37 he says the bones of the righteous man cannot be broken he read that when he read that he believed it he knew that his bones cannot be broken. He wrote it. It is a word that is written in his heart. He is the logos in the flesh. It is written about you. At old age, you will be fresh and flourishing. But that is not the problem. The problem is, do you believe it? That's the problem. Oh, I have a um, uh, professor emeritus, doctor, uh, medical you know, consultant telling me that, you know, I am 65. I need to get arthritis. We believe that. But we don't believe God's word. So what do we do? We inherit death because we have accepted death. Jesus took that verse, Psalm 37. The righteous bones cannot be broken, it says. And he saw that and he says, that is true of me. He is the logos in the flesh. He is the logos in the flesh. He read Zechariah, the, Mess the, 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 the Messiah, the, your king shall will come on a fowl of a donkey. He knew he is, he, he, the donkey he needs. He knew, that is how he knew what he needs in life. He, he read about him, he has to suffer the death of a sinner on the... He knew the cross was already inside his heart. He knew these bones cannot be broken. So when the soldier came to hit him and break his bone, he said, Ah, oh, this man is already dead. So it was fulfilled that the righteous man's bones were, cannot be broken. John quotes it in his death. Can you see how the life of 
Christ should be lived. Can you see how the life of God needs to be lived? It needs to be. We need to take the scriptures and write it in the tablet of our heart. Meditate day and night. We step into God's reality. God's reality is unending, unyielding, never changing. It's inviting all of us to step into it. We are not, we have to step outside of our reality, step into God's reality by the renewal of your mind. The word adoption means huyothesia, mature sons of God who walks according to what is written in the spirit man, the word of God. When that happens, you know what happens? The huyos that is in the spirit becomes a huyos in our soul and eventually it becomes a huyos in the body. You know, I'll show you that one scripture and finish this. Go to Romans chapter 8. Very quickly. Time is running out. Look at verse uh, 23. See, not only that, verse 23, Romans chapter 8, verse 23. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit. When even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting to go to heaven. <laughs> no, no, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. The apostles understood this truth crystal clear. That we are here to manifest as sons of God. Paul I know. Jesus I know. Jesus is the son of God. The devil is telling them. Jesus is the son of God I know. Paul is the son of God I know. Who are you? You are invoking the name of Jesus. But who are you? And the devil beat him. And uh, you know brothers and sisters. You and I are the son of God. Grow in that knowledge of that. You show up, the devil has to leave. You speak the word, the devil has to go. Because you are a son speaking. In the realm of the spirit, it was as if God himself is speaking that word. It is as if Jesus himself on planet earth speaking on. That is the office of the Christ. Office of the spirit. Of office of sonship. Into which you and I are stepped into. You need to grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Then our body itself will be huyos. Can you see the huyos will now eventually work into the body that is coming. And that's what he's saying. You know, we are groaning within ourselves. That is the word suffering in, uh, in uh, verse 17. We suffer. You know, in verse 17, if he says, you know, if you are children, then hairs, hairs of God and joint hairs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified. What do you mean by suffering? Suffering is because you are, you are completed in, in your spirit, man. You are renewing your mind. Your body is still dead. So there is actually what? There is no harmony. See, when, you're, when your spirit is made whole, made righteous, your soul is being made righteous, being saved, salvation is experienced with the renewal of your mind, the body should also be what? Renewed. Then everything will be in harmony, perfect harmony. But the body is not cooperating now. The body is still what? Operating through what? All the sinful passion that works in our members. Okay, Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, put to death your members, adultery, fornication. These are all inbuilt uh, sinful things that we have in our conscious and our subconscious mind. I have spoken a lot about this in my past, uh, not in this series, but in my past uh, talks. Okay, so that is why we are suffering. Our suffering is not, you know, uh, not because, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody is persecuting me because, you know, I'm a Christian. No, this is an internal suffering. That is why Paul is saying we are groaning within ourselves, not to escape the body. I said that again. I spoke about that in uh, uh, when I mentioned Second Corinthians chapter five, verse uh, three to eight. We are not groaning to escape to heaven. We are groaning. This body will be glorified because why? We are destined to live on planet Earth and establish God's realities, God's plan. How do how do you do it? How do you do it, brothers and sisters? It is done by making decisions. Every little decision, every day. You experience, you, you make decision based on who you are in the spirit. Then the bigger things takes care of itself. When I, in every day, the way I manage money. Okay, everybody wants to save money, give some security. I take it to the father. Father, there is great security in having a great uh, amount of money in the bank. But what do you say? That is how you make decisions. And the father will say, keep it in the bank, keep it. The father will say, take all the money and give it to the poor, give it to the poor. Everybody will say, you are a fool, you will die. Yeah, let them say. It is an internal regulation by the father. This is an inner communication with the father. There is no formula here. I can't copy that brother, I can't copy that sister. It, is an, it calls forth for, for me being alive to the spirit of God, revealed by the word of God. Amen. 
So brothers and sisters, as we come to this series conclusion, I want you to wake up every day and say, Father, you love me as you love Jesus. You don't see no sin in me. You see pre precious. That's how you start the communication. Bring to, bring to your mind who, how God sees you. Okay? And speak that over your wife and your children. And then that's how you start your prayer. And say, Lord, everything today, you're going to walk with me. In, in every decision that I take today, I'm going to allow the Spirit to regulate my life. So that involves a lot of preparatory work and meditation. So it is not very complicated. It requires that you spend five minutes a day, ten minutes a day in truth. The things that I have taught and the things that the Holy Spirit is teaching you. Spend time meditating. As James has written, you know, that you may, he who continues to look into the perfect law of liberty and not a forgetful hearer. So I read Psalm 92 and I go and forget, you know, that's how my old, old age is going to be. I'm a forgetful hearer. In Psalm 92 it says, when I become old age, you know, when I become, you know, uh, at, even at my old age, I'll be fresh and flourishing. Okay, I've seen my image. Oh, this is how my old age lo looks like. Then I go to the word and NHS tells me, oh, you in old age, you're going to get heart problem, uh, brain problem, all this Alzheimer's disease and uh, dementia. Oh, oh, what should I do? And then, the, and then the NHS gives you advice. Do this, do that, do that. And then I engage into a program, go into all sorts of things. I've forgotten what I saw. <laughs> I've forgotten what I saw. I am just regulated by the worldly knowledge of uh, human beings. No. But, uh, many people don't come and applaud you for this. If I say this is who I am, I'm, I'll be seen as a crazy guy. Yeah, in fact, that's how <laughs> some of my friends call me. You are a fanatic. You are crazy. Why I am crazy? Because this is so counterculture. We are so, in, we are think this is how it is. This is how it is. One day Christ will come and take us to heaven. You take heaven out of the equation. I am not going to heaven. I'm going to live here. If you think like that, oh, now I want to know what my old age looks like. <laughs> I don't want to ask the doctor what my old age looks like. He is painting a doom and gloom picture. He wants to finish me off at the age of 70, 75. <laughs> I don't want that knowledge. I want what God's Spirit is telling me. I close my eyes. I start imagining. 80 years I am flying. 80 years I am uh, calling my son and say, I'm in Germany, I'm going to preach, uh, I will be home later this evening. That's when you know, I'm just crazy. You think I'm crazy? I think you are crazy. If you're not doing these things, you are crazy. You're sucked into the world system, brothers and sisters. You're, you are already sucked into the world system. What I'm saying is crazy. Seriously. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But brothers and sisters, it will liberate you. God's reality doesn't change. I can give you countless examples. One example scows at the top of my head, Caleb and Joshua. 40 years they said, I will, we will go into the promised land. We'll take it. 85 years, he's saying, 40 years I had the same, eight, now I'm 85. At the age of 45, I had the strength. Give me the giants, he's saying. I have the same strength. Why did he have the same strength? Because he was connected to God's reality in his heart. He was meditating on, when I get to that land, I will take that giant. When I cross there, he is already living in the finished reality. When I get there, these fellows have all dragged me. They have wasted 40 years of my life. But nevertheless, I am going to keep my heart fixed on God's reality. When I go to the promised land, I want the giants. I want that land. Ah, that Anakims, where they are living, that looks a beautiful mountainous view. I will get a nice view. I will dig wells. He is dreaming. Dream. 40 years he is dreaming. Everybody would have thought, you old man, you old man, and the old man, old man, they all died. <laughs> the old man at the age of 85 says, give me that land, I am going now. And he went there. And he had children, and his children's children. He saw, whoa, 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 whoa. The an 85-year-old old man is coming and the giants are trembling and they are running all over everywhere. Why? He lives by a different reality. God's reality is passionate in, your, in his heart. He saw who God is. He saw who he is in relation to him. And he walk, began to walk according to, the, according to the reality. You know what God says about Joshua and Caleb? Especially about Caleb. He says, I like that guy's attitude. His heart is set on me. I love the spirit of that man. God says to Moses, Hey, you are, we are all so clever these days. We are so equipped with knowledge, understanding, amazing medical technologies. Die at 85. <laughs> they can prolong your life maybe 90 with the stair lift and walking sticks and you know, all sorts of things. But there is a reality that is available for you and me. 
that we can visualize it, see it, because it is real, according to God's word. You are the huyas of God. Forget the death. Cancel your ticket to heaven. Stay on earth. Live long and declare God's righteousness to generations and generations and generations. There is much work to do, brothers and sisters. Much work to do. Many people don't know. People are broken. Families are broken. Depressed suicide. I get an email at least on the average once one email a day. I am depressed. I am suicidal. I saw your videos. It really blessed me. Can you help me? Can you help me? This is a continuous email I get. Almost every other day I get an email. Unknown. People from not known to me. And then I, I give them my number straight away. Please call me. I want to talk to you. Some people do. Some, some people don't. But it's up to them. Oh, brothers, the world is broken. We need the huyos of God who are not tucked away thinking one day Christ will come, make me, keep me holy, keep me holy, keep me holy, then I'm gone. And God will say, why did you come here? Go down. <laughs> Go down. And there is darkness. Go shine. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a joke. Okay. <laughs> anyway, brothers, let me pray and finish. You know, Father, I thank you for this beautiful time. Help us, Lord, to understand your vision for us your vision is laid out for us very clearly in ephesians chapter 1 that lord we are predestined as to adoptions as sons as mature children who will walk after the spirit who will bring heaven's reality on planet earth in the little things that we do first and foremost in our decisions that we take in within our family we will learn to regulate uh, our lives based on who we are in the spirit in the small things first and foremost in our family Lord, let us forget about the great things. Let us forget about raising the dead or healing the paralyzed, Lord. Let us forget about those things. But what about in things like in the mundane, you know, everyday activities, how we relate to each other, how we forgive each other, how we love each other, how we, how the Spirit controls our tongue. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. How we exercise self-control in the way we speak to one another, that we encourage one another. The husband encourages wife and the wife encourages the husband. How we bless our children when we are in anger. How we learn to Lord, you know, quench the anger by the by the power of the Spirit, by the grace of your, uh, by the by the by the power of your grace. We will learn to walk after the Spirit in the small things that we do. Lord, help us, Lord. Open the eyes of our understanding, Father. Lord God, we will walk, We want to walk as mature sons and daughters of God in in our internal small lives first and foremost, and then Lord, the bigger things will take care of itself. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, these are days you're waking us up. You're awakening us with truth, O oh Father, that we will be free. Free as Jesus lived free in this planet Earth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.